I wonder if we can turn our attention now to God's Word. We've been talking over the last number of weeks around the matter of values. And I trust that everybody here has a Z card. A Z card with a Bible reading program and numbers to connect the family together. And then, of course, with the values clearly laid out. We've talked over the past weeks in the area of being God-centered, Bible-based, and Spirit-led. And we're now talking about matters that are internal to us as a family, like being people of integrity, being committed to discipleship, being devoted to marriage, family, and relationships, and being servant leaders. But today we want to talk about being devoted to marriage, family, and relationships part of our kingdom lifestyle, values we are committed to. So I wonder if we could pray together and then turn to God's word and look at what it says about these values. And so Lord, as we turn to your word, we invite you to come by your spirit to make your word live for us. Lord, we want to live your way, your pattern. And thank you for the wonder of your love and bringing us into your family. Come and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. We're talking about marriage, family, and relationships. And so part of the questions we're asking as we're doing these values, talking about them, is asking the question of ourselves personally, do we value these things? So do we value, do you value marriage, family, relationships? And if you do, how do you live that out? How does that value show in our lives? How does it show in your life? I'm struck as I look at these values of marriage, family, and relationships, that although they refer to how we live personally, there's a power in having these values because in living them out, we are a light to the world. We are modeling to the world how to live effectively in marriage, appreciating family and valuing people in relationships. And so it's important for us to know why we value these things and how to live them out. I'm struck as I look at them at seeing how foundational they are to the very structure of the universe and the very heart of God. These are not just good ideas. They speak of the way in which God made the universe, reflecting his character. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse, sorry, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18, It says that God said it's not good for the man to be alone. And often we read it thinking about the matter of marriage, but it's also talking about us as individuals. It's not good for you or I to be alone. We were made for relationship. In fact, at the time when God said this, Adam was alone. God had yet to put Adam to sleep and take Eve out of him. And so Adam was a very different kind of a person. In Adam was both male and female at that time. God had not yet put him to sleep to draw Eve out of him. Must have been a very interesting character. (laughs) Just look at your wife and smile, it's fine. Look at your husband and smile. Imagine the two of you being in one body. It used to be that way back in Genesis until God said, it's not good for you to be on your own. I'll make this interesting and I'll take one out of you, two out of you. How did God know that it was not good to be alone? Well, God knows everything and God is three persons in one God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In fact, God is a relationship. 
Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God, operating together cooperatively, having the same will. God is a relationship. And God wants us to learn to be effective in relationships. He's going to be living with us forever. And he wants the best for us, wants us to be loving, desiring the best for one another, knowing how to cooperate, knowing how to be considerate. He's wanting us to know how to live effectively in relationships. As we grow in life, we are growing in our relationships. A newborn baby relates to mommy, learns to relate to daddy and brothers and sisters, goes off to school and learns to relate to those in school. We have a picture here of little children in a school. Perhaps you remember some interesting relationships from when you were that age. We need to be effective in relationships to be effective in business and the marketplace. One of the ways we build our relationships and enjoy these relationships is through recreation and sport. Some of us watched some of this last night. But notice it wasn't only the people on the field, there were many spectators. There was lots of relationship there and of course there's relationship in many places of recreation. We have brides together, we enjoy being together. We are made for relationship. It is not good for us to be alone. Relationships are for our good. And so we need to resist the temptation to separate ourselves and just try and do life on our own. Life is better together. And everybody said, with different levels of enthusiasm this morning. <laughs> It's not good for us to be alone. Life is made for us to enjoy together. And it's been particularly rich for us to enjoy life together as part of this family. Don't you think? Just amazing how God brought us together and has bound us together. I want to talk now about why we should value marriage. Maybe the first question should be, do you value marriage? And if you do, why? In many of these situations, we take things for granted. That's just the way things are done. But there are very, very sound reasons why marriage needs to be valued. Please notice in your Bible, the Bible opens with God talking about marriage in Genesis chapter 2. He mentions in Genesis 1 that he made the male and female. And then he talks about Adam and Eve coming together. And he gives a principle for the rest, rest of history. It's not, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. God was the one who designed marriage. Put together two different people in the same marriage. And husbands and wives said they're definitely different. Definitely different. But you know, it's not only two in a marriage. There are three in a marriage. God, husband, and wife. The Bible opens with marriage, Adam and Eve, and closes with the marriage supper of the Lamb, Jesus and his church. Marriage is very much part of the fabric and foundation of the heart of God and the universe he has made. Marriage is likened to the relationship between Jesus and his church in Ephesians 5. And the Bible has much teaching on marriage. It begins, of course, with that teaching on leaving and cleaving. Man will leave his father and mother, cleave to his wife, and they will become one flesh. And we notice in marriage there's protection for marriage. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not com covet thy neighbor's wife. Very important protection. In fact, back in the Old Testament, if people were caught in adultery, 
They were stoned. Praise the Lord Jesus has come. We don't have those stonings. But the principle still applies. Marriage is valuable and needs protection. And so I wonder what steps you take to protect your marriage. I wonder how valuable your marriage is to you. Is it worth extra effort to make sure your marriage is protected? Good and healthy marriages are essential foundations for a healthy church. Essential foundations for a healthy nation. The book of Malachi says the very last verses of the Old Testament. Before that great and dreadful day, the day of judgment, I will send you the prophet Elijah and he will come and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of children to the fathers or else I will strike the land with a curse. And we stand in a particular place of vulnerability in our nation with large numbers of orphans, large numbers of single mothers. And the call goes out to us as the church of Jesus Christ, called to be the light of the world. Won't you show the value of marriage by the way you live in your marriages? Won't you stay committed husband to wife, wife to husband? Won't you take up your roles as father and mother, your responsibilities to raise your children? So we're called to value marriage because it's part of God's way, part of the structure of the universe, and it's essential for the health of the church of Jesus Christ and the health of the nation. We can have all sorts of government programs, but when the real foundation is, is we need men to be committed to their wives and wives to be committed to their husbands. And it's possible to be committed how do we live out this value? Scripture says, what God has joined together, let no man separate. And so presently, if you're considering a divorce, stop it. If you're living together, get married or separate. If you're thinking of a, an affair, that's bad English. It's not an affair, it's adultery. Shame on you if you're considering an affair, destroying a family. The damage it does is deep. It's not obvious externally, but it's deep. And families carry the scars for a long time. Jesus died to bring healing. But we need to be committed to one another and not allow the separation. One of the ways we value marriage in this body is we have men counsel men and women counsel women. When we talk about emotional things and deep things of the heart, there's a danger of emotional connection. And so we don't have situations, shouldn't have situations where men are counseling women or women are counseling men because it's dangerous and we value marriage. Notice that marriage is based on the partner's choice of wanting the best for their partner. Love. Love is not a fuzzy feeling. Love is a choice to want the best for one another. I mean, the fuzzy feelings are nice, but they uh, come and go, don't they? And so agape love is I'm choosing to be committed to you come hell or high water and we are together till death do us part. And I'm not going to cause your death. <laughs> 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 
Marriage is a covenant. It's not a contract or an agreement. When we say to our husband or wife before God, I promise to be with you till death do us part, God takes us seriously. As we are believers, He lives in us, and He is the one making the covenant, and He is able to keep the covenant because He lives in the husband, He lives in the wife, and He is able to keep the covenant. People say, as they want to get a divorce, we're incompatible. So what else is new? But God lives in you and he's not incompatible with your husband or your wife. And he's able to carry you through in the marriage, enjoying it, if you will just choose to go with him and not with your feelings. The Bible from Genesis through to Revelation has a highlight of one man and one wife. The first 21 marriages mentioned in the Bible are all one man to one wife, with one exception, Lamech. The New Testament's pattern is one man, one wife, because Jesus is married to one church. We are called to model that to the society around us. How else do we value marriage? As husbands, we live considerately with our wives. Consider what's best for them. Want to please them. We value marriage by women cooperating with their husbands, seeking to cooperate with the direction they are giving to the home. It's also called submission. Most women prefer cooperation. In valuing marriage, we're called to live for the threefold covenant, God, husband, and wife. The scripture says to us in Malachi, guard yourself in your spirit if you're married. Don't let your attention wander. Husbands, your wife is your standard of beauty. Wives, your husband is your standard of handsomeness. with or without hair. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> the scripture says in Hebrews, keep the marriage bed pure. That's not talking about white sheets. We should not be having our hearts or attention wander to other ladies around us, other men around us. Men tend to be visual. We face a challenge in our day and age. The challenge has always been there, it's just coming more frequently with the matter of the internet and cell phones, pornography. If we don't keep our wives as our standard of beauty and guard what we do with our eyes, we can end up with difficulty in our marriage. And so por pornography may represent freedom of speech, but it represents danger for marriage. And so we stay away from it if we're Christians those who are not should also stay away. It's a risk. It's a danger. But if you have a challenge with pornography, men, and some women as well, get to your pastor and get help. Because freedom is available. We face a particular challenge in our nation with adultery. We have, in this part of the world, Southern Africa, between Botswana, South Africa, and Swaziland, the highest rate of HIV and AIDS. Because of adultery. 
And if the church is not going to stand up and be the standard, this nation will continue to have the problem. Sometimes there is talk about legalizing prostitution. Sometimes we see pictures of Christians walking with placards saying, stop prostitution. Do not legalize prostitution. Never yet seen Christians carrying a banner that says stop adultery. Although adultery is far more damaging than prostitution. And so, can we say, let's stop the adultery. Let's stop the affairs. Let's be committed to one another and let's see God's power work in our homes. The idea of man and woman coming together in a covenant with God reflects God's very being in this universe. Your marriage is a reflection of his character. It's God's design. We can see a picture of a happy family here. It's God's design. Man and woman together raising children in the ways of God. Well done to you who have chosen to stay faithful to your husband and wife, to bring your wavering feelings under the control of the Holy Spirit, to make a choice to want the best for your husband, your wife, and your children. You experience the Lord's blessing as you do. We need more of that in our nation. We want to talk now about the value of, fam of family. Do you value family? And if you do, why do you value family? And I once again like to suggest that, not suggest, to say, it's part of the universe. Part of the way eternity is. God has always been a father. And he has always wanted a family. Hence, he sent Jesus to come. He made the universe so we could be born, come to, know G come to know the Father and be born again into his family because he wants us living with him in his family eternally. And so family is an eternal value. It's not just for this life. If you're struggling to live in family now, Trust the Holy Spirit to help you to learn to live well in family because we're going to live in family forever with God as our Father, with Jesus as our elder brother, with one another as brothers and sisters. It's forever. God is our Father. Jesus is our elder brother. We are sons and daughters of the Father, brothers and sisters of Jesus, brothers and sisters to one another eternally. Because God instructs us how to live in family and shows us the bad consequences of not, fo not valuing family. That's why we value it. God instructs us how to live in family. Love one another. So how do we honor family? How do we value family? What things should we do? We should honor our father and our mother. If we are five years old or 15 or 20 or 50, we should keep honoring our father and mother. That's how we value family. The hearts of the father should be turned to their children. The children should be more important than the career. Children should be well raised. And we value family by taking care of our immediate family. The scripture says, if you don't take care of your immediate family, you're worse than an unbeliever. Tells us how highly God values family because he's a father. Sometimes people come and say, my mother is now a widow. Will the church please take care of her? The answer is no. No. Because the Bible says you're supposed to take care of your mother, not the church. Does that make sense? If there's somebody who is widowed who doesn't have family, then the church comes and in, isn't involved. 
But it's the family's responsibility first to take care of its own members. That's how we value family. One of the ways we value family is to recognize the authority of the family. Like the Hatfield Christian School, we want to cooperate with parents in raising their children because we recognize the children are under the authority of their parents. And any educational system where the government is involved and the government doesn't recognize the authority of the parents and the children is going to lead to disaster. Because God decided that children would be given to fathers and mothers, not to governments. I'm not saying government shouldn't be involved at all. All I'm saying is where the government's involved, it has to recognize the authority of the parents. There's also the value of the spiritual family we have. That's our family here. There are many churches. We're called to value the spiritual family that's our home. There is no perfect spiritual family. Have you noticed? See, I'm a member here, so that means it's imperfect. But then so are you a member here, and you're also imperfect. So we're a bunch of imperfect people together. But it's God's family. And so we're called to stick to the family we're in and not wander around. If things get difficult, we're called to walk through the difficulty. The only reason to leave is because God says so, not because we're unhappy. The problem with leaving if we're unhappy is we take our unhappiness with us. This is a family. We understand we're not perfect. And if we're struggling, we need to talk to our pastor and say, please help. But what tends to happen sometimes is people think, no, no, I don't want my pastor to know I'm struggling. Let me go to another church and they can help me there where they don't know me. And so we're called to stick with our spiritual family. See the spiritual family as foundational, although it's imperfect. We're called to walk in the light. Here's a picture here coming up of a family together, praying together around a meal. It's important for us to eat together, to pray together in family. Another picture comes up of a spiritual family gathered together. Because God is a father, families are important. Physical families and spiritual families are highly valued by God and we're called to live that out. I want to talk about do we value relationships now? We've talked about marriage and family. There's much to be said. We can't say everything in one session, but this is a start. Why do you value relationships? Why are relationships important? One of the reasons would be because Jesus said the greatest commandment that summarizes the whole of the Old Testament is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Relationship with God. Because we have a relationship with God, we can have relationship with others. The second commandment is love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's why relationships are important. God is relationship. And because we have a relationship with him, we can love one another and enjoy one another. We, we value relationships because each one is made in God's image, in his likeness. And we will live together forever. So we want to value each person and relationships with each person. Psalm 8 says, we are made a little lower than the angels lower than the heavenly beings, and we've been crowned with glory and honor. The person sitting next to you has high value in the universe. And relating to them is very, very important. So how do we value these relationships? By showing respect to everyone. 1 Peter 2.17 says that we should show respect to everyone because they are made in the image of God. Those of high standing in society, those of low standing, 
Those who are easy to get on with, those who are not easy to get on with, all need to be respected. Scripture also says, love your enemies. It's possible because he lives in us. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. We value relationships by building personal appreciation for everyone we interact with in family, business, and community through personal contact, talking, and servanthood. Scripture says if you would be great, you must be the servant of all. And so we're called to love one another. Agape love means to desire and work for the best for one another. And this love is not a choice. It leads to actions of praying for one another, appreciating one another, and serving one another. We also want to value and protect human life. Prepare to lay down our own lives to protect others. And one of the things we need in our nation is a high value on human life a high value on protecting the vulnerable, standing up for what is right. We've talked now about the values of marriage, family, and relationships, just touched on them. The reasons they are valuable, we've talked about, but remember, all of them are eternal things. Marriage, we're gonna be married to Jesus forever. We get a chance to practice with our husband or wife. We're going to be in God's family forever. We're going to be relating and we are called to relate well to others in love for their best. That's the call on us. And perhaps today there are some here who are not part of God's family. God made you and placed you on this earth so you would get to know him and make a free will choice to respond and become part of his family by deciding not to live for yourself and live for him. He wants to give you an abundant life. Perhaps you say, but I've got to fix my life up first. I've done lots of things wrong. I can't come to God until I've fixed it all. But the reality is you cannot fix anything you've done wrong. Only Jesus can. And so, if you want to come into his family, if you realize you've done wrong, Jesus came to die to pay for what you've done wrong and to fix it. And so, if you would like to say, Lord, I've done wrong, I'm a sinner. I realize now that I need someone to pay for my sin. And I want to accept that Jesus has died for that sin. And I want to stop living for myself and live for him. I'd like to invite you to pray with me. To speak to God and tell him of your decision. Because he's given you a free will. And he's not going to violate your free will. So let's bow our heads and let's pray together. Right now, the Holy Spirit is touching certain people. You can feel something in your body because the Holy Spirit's saying that this is for you. This is for you. Would you pray after me? Speak to God in your heart quietly, not out loud. Jesus, I have done wrong. I've messed up and I wish I hadn't. I want to choose today to repent, to admit that I'm a sinner and to make a decision to no longer live for myself but to live for you, Jesus. Come into my life and have your way. Lead me. I believe, Jesus, you are the Son of God, that you did die, and you died for my sins and rose again. And I'm choosing today to put my life in your hands, to live for you. Come, in, Lord Jesus, come into my life, in Jesus' name. 
Let's keep our heads bowed, our eyes closed. If you prayed that prayer, would you raise a hand? Anybody at all pray that prayer? Up in the galleries. See those hands up there. Down below. It's the most important decision of your life. That's why God made you so that you could come into his family. You were born into your family. He now wants you born again into his so you can live with him eternally. He says, if you acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you before my father. And so if you prayed that prayer, I'd like to invite you to stand. Would you stand right where you are as quickly as you can if you prayed that prayer? Well done. There's more who've prayed. Would you stand? Don't let fear get you now. This is the most important decision of your life. Most important decision of your life. We want to give you something to help you in your new walk with God. I'd like to invite you to come to the front. Bring all of your things with you. The pastors will meet you here. Come as quickly as you can. If you're up in the balcony, we'll wait for you. If you're wondering, should I come? The answer is yes, come as quickly as you can. If you're listening at home and you prayed the prayer, there are people waiting to take your call, invite you to call this number, 012-348-3480. Once again, for those who've been listening at home and prayed the prayer, 012-348-3480. Perhaps you have previously made a commitment to the Lord and you've wandered from Him and you want to make a recommitment. I'd like to invite you to come. Come as quickly as you can. Just wait a few more minutes as people come from the balcony. Coming into God's family, His eternal family, to be with Him forever. God as your father, Jesus as your brother. Well done, most important decision of your life. Welcome brothers and sisters. It's good to have you with us eternally. Bless you. There's some more coming, just wait for a few more. One of our pastors is going to go with you, pray with you, keep you about seven minutes or so, get your address so we can get you some material to keep with you, help you in your new walk with the Lord. Who's the pastor? Pastor Herman over there. Won't you turn this way and follow him just across to the room over there. Lord bless you. Will you show me your glory, Lord? I want to know you, Jesus. Thank you for joining us. Please join us next week as Pastor Francois continues to build on the kingdom lifestyle values. Want to see you, Jesus. Jesus says to, to dream and have a godly ambition towards being a leader is not necessarily wrong or evil. What really matters is how you get there. Whoever wants to be a leader must be your servant. And in a sense, I want to say to you that in this world, there is a call at this moment for people to step up. The message was good for me uh, in that.